Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Max, I'm the fast talking flipper. Angie's my better half. It's late in the day, she's inside. She'll be editing this for me and I appreciate that of her. She does all that kind of stuff behind the scenes and we work together as resellers. We buy here locally in uh, the Cincinnati area and we buy it at yard sales, thrift stores, estate sales, that kind of stuff. We sell it online for more, typically on eBay, but we sell in other marketplaces as well. And this is outlining what we do when we do that. It has been a weird conversation in the last 24 hours because a larger YouTuber, I mean, now not larger, I mean, in the scale of things, he's really not that big, but someone that held themselves out as being able to propel your business into the seven-figure range and... um they had, you know, 10,000 subs and they have demonetized, well, they've never been monetized. That was kind of their gimmick was that um, they never monetized their channel. They just put out information for you and did it because they love putting out videos. Well, suddenly they are no longer a reseller. Well, not really. They're just going part-time reselling and going back to getting a J-O-B. Now, there's been a trend of that that we've seen. Uh, Paige and I, the one foot flipper. We were talking about this this morning and we both had the same idea. We want to make a video about it. He got his out before I got mine out. So if you're hearing this for a second time and you think that I'm copying him, really not. I have screenshots to tell him that, hey, I had this idea first, but that's okay. We're, we're good friends. So I'm not worried about that. Um, we were talking about it this morning. <clears throat> Forgive me. I'm having problems with my throat today. My, my voice is really messed up. But uh, we were talking about it this morning, how there's been a trend of resellers refocusing. Uh, obviously, the first one that comes to mind is Chris, old school picker, how he got out of the social media aspect of it and how that affected his business. I did a video on that a while ago, and we saw how that affected his business. Another one that was openly admitting, you know, hey, I'm going to get a job and I'm going to do this part time was Dragon Master Finds. Um, probably not a bigger YouTube channel, but you may know him. If you watch me, you might know him because you come across him in some of the chats and whatnot. He said he's going part time. John, Cincinnati Picker, huge channel, gigantic channel, great, great guy, and he has pivoted to become a real estate agent. He's not going to get out of reselling. I think that is a great idea for John because John has that charisma. John sees the bigger picture, and for John, selling real estate is a jump from real uh, reselling. He's still going to do reselling, but he's not going to probably be have the time be having the time to pick up those $20 dumbbells at a yard sale and take them to play against sports. That kind of thing. So it's going to impact him some way shape or form and reshape the way he's doing things. The thing that uh is different about Josh Galt is that he has a gigantic sore 16,997 items is what this store is encompassing. And I was very interested to see how somebody that goes from that large of a store takes it and says, no, I can't make this work. When here I am in a shed with a thousand items. And I'm like, man, this is, this is simple. We've had a terrible week. That's why you haven't seen me put out a video uh, about what has sold. We have had a horrible week. I think we sold maybe five items. You know what I did? I pivoted and I started selling car parts. As soon as I said, okay, we had a day where there's nothing selling, we're gonna need to make that up some way, shape or form. So I went out and I sold a couple things. I sold uh, our entire yard sale pile. Imagine being able to get rid of all of your yard sale stuff for the same amount that you would have probably gotten from a yard sale but have it all gone and not have to take anything to goodwill, not have to give anything away, not have to put a thing into the dumpster, nothing like that. It's all gone. So we sold that. We sold an entire shell. I got an entire car out of here this week. We've got a lot of things going on that weren't eBay related, but they still kept pumping money into the business. This is the slow season. This is where you're going to slow down. Paige had said in his video that now is not the time to get in full time. Now is the time to get in full time. I look at things differently. COVID was easy riding. Anybody could do it. The storm was brewing. That was what was going right then. The water was high. Everybody was able to just make money by throwing anything online. And now we're back to reality. COVID is over. We have to deal with the fact that video games are not, you know, a Wii is no longer worth $150. Was it really worth $150 then? 
or were people just paying ridiculous prices because they thought they had to, because they had nothing better to do. So now we're into the reality of things. If you have the business sense, and what I see a lot of when I look at Facebook, when I look at these different groups that are talking about things, is that these people don't have the business sense about what to buy or what to pay for things. There are huge YouTubers out there that have no idea what they're doing, but they manage to get by on it because they have a good following now. I look at Josh Galt's store, and I don't want to bash the guy, but his his store is full of things that I would never purchase. The price on him looks like it's... Eh, eh. His sell-through rate is... He has sold 1,300, a little over 1,300 items in the last 90 days. Let's see if I can go up to the top and figure that one out. His sell-through rate is atrocious. Absolutely terrible. It's less than 10%. Um, depending on how you want to calculate it, but he has sold less than um, less than one tenth of his store, uh, thirteen hundred plus items. It doesn't tell me, but he has sixteen thousand nine hundred ninety seven listed. His sell through rate is what is that? Years, years to sell his entire store. Um, for me, that doesn't work because I know looking at this stuff that he's probably giving a decent chunk of change for it. Now the problem with selling and a lot of the stuff sells for low dollar. I don't think that he's probably got more than a $40,000, $50,000 90 day total um, on 1,300 items. I'm at 600 and we have $30,000 90 day total. So if you want to compare, you know, apples to apples, that, that's kind of where um, I compare my store at based on his. His thing is he had a couple of these hand carved ducks that sold January 15th for probably $10,000, give or take. These are um, something to look for if you've never seen them. But then he drops way off right away. You know, he's still got some good items. Now, his store is full of items that are high-priced. He's got a bunch of high-priced things. He's probably got 1,000, 2, 3, 4,000 items over $100. That's kind of where you want to be. But those sell, as you can see, it's such a slow sell-through rate that you have to really bank on that. Unfortunately for Josh, he said that um, he had a few things come up all at once. Uh, his cars needed repairs. His son needed to get new braces. And he had some home repairs that needed to be done. And that's that's very daunting. If you can get into this full time, don't live paycheck to paycheck. Don't live payout to payout. That's not the way to do it. That's not the way to do life, period. You should have a cushion, and that cushion should be able to support you. Unfortunately for him, he said, I, I don't have an option. Um, from what I gather, he picked up on a job and immediately was able to get insurance, and that took away the braces. Uh, so he's already working full time. I don't agree with a lot of the things that he was saying in his um, his videos. He has since taken down all of his videos. All of his content is now gone off of YouTube, so you can't even go and rewatch it. But it, there was a lot of stuff that I was just like, I don't, I don't agree with that philosophy. I don't agree with that way to do things. And looking at his store is 100% the reason why. If you're here and you want to hear real talk, I think we do things a pretty good way. You can modify things from the way that we do them and do them your way, that's a perfect model, but that's kind of what you want to have. I don't see a mix of things that sell quickly in his store. I don't see him adding a ton of video games or a ton of uh, consumables, you know, like shoes that are work shoes, that kind of thing. That's what you have to have as a flow, tools. We've talked about tools on this channel where when you buy tools, you're insured that they're going to go out fast, as long as they're priced right. When you buy a, an antique 1769 uh, sermon signed by Samuel Webster, how long is that going to take to sell? How long is, uh, you know, a stack of 400 vintage stereo view photo cards going to sell? Like that stuff's going to sit forever. It may sell the very next day. That's the kind of thing that, you know, it could be so weird that it may sell the very next day but then it could sit forever. His store, looking at it aesthetically, the pictures are wonderful. The descriptions are wonderful. Um, I think his pricing is a little crazy when you get into like looking at some of this other stuff. Um, the only reason this sold quick was because it's 14, or it, it sold for as much as it is because it's 14 karat solid gold. 
Otherwise, that wouldn't sell. It's a Masonic. How many Masons do you know? I'm a Mason, and I don't know that many Masons. Uh, it's just... <clears throat> He's got a lot of great stuff. He's got a lot of great sales, but he also also has a lot of low dollar sales. I bet you we could get down to the under the hundred uh, real quick. And what it looks like is he's got a lot of things that are um, being sold with coupons, um, which eh, I mean, you know, if you look at it up or down, I guess uh, I offer discounts. I guess that's probably not a bad idea if I uh, offer a coupon. And I don't know how that would work. If I offered a coupon on the page uh, that it was already 8% off, take an additional 8% off of this item uh, just by adding this coupon versus if I sent uh, an offer, could they add the coupon to the offer? I don't want to give them 16% off. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. But uh, I, that's something that I should probably look into. This is learning from other people's adversity. I'm just, I walked myself through that. You see how my brain works now. Josh's store is just, it's not adequate. It's, it wasn't something that you could sustain doing that. His, it required too much volume. Imagine having 17,000 items and not small items. 17,000 items. My place stays a wreck. And this is 1,000 items. I've got room for probably, if I wanted to tuck it in here, and I mean tuck it in here, I could do probably 2,000, 2,500. And then I'm going to start to look at, you know, how am I really going to maximize my space? 17,000 items? That's insanity. That's a lot. That has to take time. That takes people. That takes, you know, it's, it's just insane. So I believe that, a lot of people that are going to fail this year, because I watched the podcast and flipping ain't easy, John. Um, he he put out a video that a lot of people are going to fail in 2024. I believe those people that are going to fail in 2024 are bad business people. Guys, let's be real. You may be a bad reseller. I had to tell a student the other day, maybe automotive is not for you, son. Face the music, you know. Uh, when I, I sp watched him struggle to pull a wiring harness out of a door that literally should have taken 20 minutes and he spent three hours on it. Maybe this just isn't for you. Maybe this is something that you need to, you know, reevaluate when it comes to sourcing, when it comes to finding things. If you're having trouble finding things on Facebook, look somewhere else. There is stuff out there. If you live in an area that's not heavily populated, there are auctions around. I guarantee that there are auctions around. If you want to do this, you're going to have to find the solution of what it takes to do this. I wanted to do this. I'm in Cincinnati. I have the solution, and I can drive around to wherever I need to go in Cincinnati. If you're in the middle of Tennessee and you are 20 minutes from the, the nearest town, and that nearest town is only a small town then you're going to have to find solutions. And that's going to have to be either making a very well-known network where you broadcast your message, I am looking to buy your stuff. I want to come to your house and dig through your closets. I want to go into your barn and freaking take everything out and figure out what you have that I want to make mine. You might have to do that. And that might require you going into town and sitting at the McDonald's with those old men in the morning and doing these kind of things. That's what it takes. It doesn't take, I can just jump into this and make six figures right away, like, you know, what Josh was trying to say. I just don't believe that it's it's a, a realistic goal. We did it, and we worked our asses off. We absolutely worked our asses off to make it happen. We took care of someone full-time, and we were still able to hustle and do the things. We enjoyed it, too. That was the thing. We really enjoyed what we did. Because we were able to just flip things and make it work so easy. And now it's kind of just become second nature. If I want to kick it up a gear when I do have more time here soon, hopefully, I'll kick it up a gear and I'll really get heavy duty into it. You know, I'd love to open up a, a, a brick and mortar uh, swap shop kind of deal. I don't know that I'll ever be able to, but I would love to do something like that. But those are solutions for my problem in my head of sourcing. How do I want to source? So you got to think about things. How do you want to do what you're trying to do? And what's the solution to get there? Don't find problems. Find solutions. Me as a mechanic, that's what I do. I fix things. Find solutions for them. It's an engineering kind of brain. But I wanted to jump on. I didn't have a video that I was going to put out this week showing what sold because there is nothing. Four or five items. Really, um, 
not much money. We might have only made three, four hundred, five hundred dollars maybe this week on eBay. It's been a very terrible week. And you know why? I haven't been listing and I haven't been killing my listings and adding new ones. I nuked the store the other day. And with that, uh, I, I don't have any more listings. I have to pay 25 cents a listing to put anything up. So if I start uh, with my 25 listings a day and killing those off and refreshing, 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 then uh, I'm paying, what is that? Uh, $12.50. No, not even that much. Twenty uh, $5.25. $5.25 every... Um, I, hell, I don't know how much it is now. I'm saying it four, five, five, five. Yeah, five dollars and twenty-five cents. Six dollars and twenty-five cents. Holy crap! I'm I'm tired. I've been up since five a.m. and I'm really tired. So six dollars and twenty-five cents is what I'll be paying every day to relist items just to refresh them. And I'm not going to do that. It's it's only seven more days to the end of the month. Um, six more days until the end of the month, and that's that's where I'll be. So I wanted to, you know, get the video out there and let you guys know what I've been thinking today and what I've been thinking this week and so on and so forth. I really appreciate you tuning in. We've had another influx of new subscribers, and I love it. I really like that I'm getting in front of new people and that new people are interacting with us. I try to answer every question. I try to respond to every comment. Um, I do my best to do that. Uh, I, I appreciate you guys who find me on Facebook and who reach out there. There. We have conversations there as well. Uh, I really do appreciate you all being around. We're getting close to 2,000 subs, which is insane um, because I really didn't think this channel would take off at any pace whatsoever. But uh, I appreciate you guys being here. Remember, like, subscribe, share, comment down below. Let me know what you think, how you see things going, and I'll see you on the next one.